Let's get this started. <clears throat> Is there anything right. that rhymes with esophagus? Yeah. What? You In- have not a clue. Indianapolis. Also, I had a redneck from <laughs> Alabama. You're just <laughs> pronouncing it different. Are you on? <laughs> Old Mosley from Alabama sent me a message. And he wanted to make fun of you guys. because Me and you, actually. He complimented you, yeah. of course, oh, okay. because he goes, I'm, and I'm even going to say it wrong here again, but... I'm from a redneck from Alabama, and even I know that it's tobacco, not debacle. Oh, those guys, you don't even know what they're saying. You don't know if they're going <laughs> no, to start it's with debacle, an H not tobacco. Yeah, see, I said it wrong. You just said it backwards. Debacle. I thought it was debacle, and you guys it said it debacle. was tobacco. No, it's, he did. Y'all ain't even a word, and they say that all the time. No, but y'all, y'all make is sense. A word. Hold on. Y'all you makes all. sense. It's you all. That the is one that just doesn't make slang. sense. Do you know what yins is? Yins? Yins. yins. That's no. what they say when you go to Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania and anywhere north of there. And do you know what? Because y'all means you all come over here. All right? Or you all, I'm addressing you all, but that's is just, y'all. That's humans just but being yuns, lazy. No, do you know what yins is? A guy explained it to me. Humans. No. What? Yins? It's you. Hold on. Give me the, where's the region? You, me, and them. Basis Pennsylvania that. north. Oh, you, me, and them. Pennsylvania north. No. You and them. Who? What is it? You and you and you and you, oh all those ends is yins. <laughs> that is the dumbest. That's exactly thing I've what heard. they told me. Just stay in the northeastern region. <laughs> they got Sorry. turkeys up there too, it's though. We probably got some people good at listening. Baseball because apparently they don't have a lot going for them up there. They yins. got a lot of good baseball teams. All right, let's get this rolling. It's a good thing. I know. I'm just saying. Did you got, tell me I got a and like, the Patriots? Unfortunately, yeah, they but they now. suck right now. Am I introducing this in some other way? They turkey won't even season tell me. part two, man. Part like six. No, I'm saying like turkey season story time part two. Oh, story t- This is bedtime. So if some of you are a little <laughs> sleepy, um, we're going to try to tell you a story. No, here we go. All right. Welcome to the Raised Hunting Podcast. And we're back. I got two special guests. And they're specialer than ever today because we're talking about these two and their turkey antics. Um, plus one. Yes. Yeah. So, anyhow. My plus one. Your plus one. Yeah. Your my, significant my, other. My hunting boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give a shout out to, uh, I can't see what his full name is on here. So, C Raider on Instagram is the man because he's backed me up against you guys. Uh-oh. Uh, he, must be a wa- he must be a there. Whopper no, Chopper he, fan. Clearly... He is a high intellectual individual. It's probably oh hard for you to connect Lord, with. Oh my gosh! Yes, he deep said, around here. He said it's that I should not goes. listen to you guys and I should continue with my Whopper Chopper plan. That's what you and just asked. He was correct. So you can just kiss my butt. I'm just impressed. Right. You and it. the Raiders. Well, we better go first. I'm not kissing the Raiders' butt ever. The Raiders? What are you going to have to know? That's Screw the Raiders. C Raider. That's he a, has that's bad a, taste. That's a really cool last name. I didn't even realize that. Hey, you have now. bad taste in who you support as hunters and bad taste in football. Just saying. It has nothing to do with football. It's his last name. Oh, Coming well, from a Broncos yeah. fan. Well, you just that's said you have to kiss Raider. Oh, his fan. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you the whole intellectual part. That was Dude, bad. We're, at some point, level. we're going to have to start this podcast. Here we go. you guys are like I'll talk. off the chart. I'll start. All right. We had three shots on one spot, three shots and three sits. Killed two turkeys. Good job. Two turkeys. All right, on to the next one. We that killed. was unfair. <laughs> you got to talk for a long time. How many turkeys uh, are we at so far now? So let's I have bring one, up to date. Five for Iowa. Five. Let's count Nebraska. Oh, two, two, one. Six. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, seven and if Shane's. we count Shane. Okay, Ooh, so we've killed seven turkeys. Eight if we so count far. Walt. Boom. Yeah, that's eight. true. Alabama. So yeah. one Alabama, Alabama slammer. two Nebraska, and five here. Yeah, five we got here. five here. Okay, two doubles and a wapa chopper. Two doubles. That is and a actually Wapa-chopper. nuts when you say that. Yeah, two doubles. Because I've, have you ever doubled in Iowa? I know you said you've never done it yourself, but have you ever done it with anybody else? I don't know about in Iowa. The only I'm time I'm trying to think. I think the only only time I've ever doubled was in Nebraska, and it was myself when we got what three shots. Yeah. And yeah, then you turn around and shot. I haven't, I've never doubled with anybody, and I've never doubled alone in Iowa. Well, back then, if you had hit, every, if you had made the shot, I would have filled all three tags. Tripled. Yeah. 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 Well, I screwed up. We we tripled in Nebraska. Yeah, we one did. One time. Two two Jakes and a and, and a, Tom. a Tom. Yeah. Well, I don't think we've ever beat a triple. 
to get in, I don't know how you really could, to be honest with you. You'd have to have four Toms come in and <laughs> I can tell you, stupid the If one time. more Jake could come in, we would have four because he was going to con- keep shooting. That's fair. He was all jacked up about, oh, here comes another one. I said, I thought you were going to wait on a Tom. No, this one's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> and I shot that one, and I told him, I'm going to shoot this one too. <laughs> and the great thing was, is they fe- so when mine came in, we had three decoys and two dead turkeys laying right there because they never went anywhere. Yeah. So it was like a more. No, oh, that's bad. He, I'm pretty sure that that was a first responder turkey coming in. He's coming he to was, help. He was going to help his buddies. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> well, to get into it, we had me and Joey. I was trying to take him because we've just made him. Uh, we've 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 made the mistake of getting him hooked. Of uh, he is all in on bow hunting, and he only had like a week till he didn't wasn't going to hunt the rest of the season. So we got him. The f- was it the first morning? Yeah, first we morning, we hunted yeah. that evening. And got an idea of where they were at because I had an idea. But then the next morning, I did not realize how close I set up to them because they weren't gobbling or anything. And we were, like, looking at where the tree was. We were, like, 60 yards, which impressively we got set up, and they didn't ever. Because you guys like, are talking about set up, like, a blind Yeah, we decoys. set up a blind decoys, and they ne- nothing ever, like, putted or nothing. And actually, we walked by another hen that was behind us. But anyways, they How picked, early were you? Early. I mean, we were sitting in the dark for, I don't know, 10 minutes probably. Okay. The We've other been thing, really early all year, honestly. But the other thing is there's cattle where yeah. you're at. And I think just that's a little point to keep in mind. You got cows or horses in an area. A lot of times you can get away with a little more mm-hmm. movement on the ground because they can't quite tell what's going on. Especially They're if you expecting. stick together kind of. Yep. Yep. It just looks like can, a blob. Can turkeys see at night at all? Not, not well. very well. They're not nocturnal. Okay. So they got to be used to stuff walking under them then. Yeah. Oh, they know stuff's walking under them. But you would think that maybe if it was starting to get light a little bit, they would make, I don't know. They yeah. probably couldn't have seen very well. But anyways, uh, we got sat, and I realized how close we were when they pitched because they started gobbling, and the ones that were right next to us didn't gobble and hit the, the ground at like 40 yards. <laughs> I was like, all right, deal. We're going to have two big doms walking right to us because they strutted right there in six to eight hens. They didn't gobble on the roost? These two didn't. So the, I how think did you they, know they were there? Because I heard hens. I didn't know they were there. I heard hens because I heard hens that were in the tree right there really loud. So I wonder and if they, they were a little nervous just because you guys were right there. Uh, they might have been, but they didn't gobble at like at all hmm. the, for the whole entire morning. Well, they pitched down two toms, 40 yards, two hours of sitting there. They would strut back and forth, back and forth, and they would not get past a tree. The hens would come up to them, and then they just let the hens go away, and they wouldn't even care. The hens would, We got every hen to come to our decoys and come hang out for a couple minutes, and they would not come. And, and they're so, still at 40? Yeah, they never got past 40. And so we sat there, and I told Joey, I said, I'm not sure what the heck to do. I've thrown out every call. I've moved, like, decoys move in. I, I don't have any other tricks. Well, then I realized that I had my special decoy in my back pocket told him joey pull that out we got nothing to lose and so it's just pick it up it's right there oh yeah in case someone watches this yeah i'm repairing it at the moment but it's drying so this this little puppy here where'd warren go we got a tom here now (laughs) but it's just folds up and i keep i keep it in my vest explain for people just listening yes oh i guess yeah for anybody that's not seen it it's a two-dimensional it's a montana decoy is what it is uh turkey strutting turkey and it's pretty big. I mean, it covers you up pretty well. But I keep that. It just You just, like, rotate and twist, and it's a little tiny. I mean, it's just like a circle about the size of a basketball, but it's flat. And I keep that in the back pocket of my vest because uh, just in any event that I had to try to reap something or whatever I had to do, well, I grabbed that, and I shoved it out the side window of the, the blind. And when I got it behind the, de- behind the blind a little bit, I let go, and it popped up. And I said, oh, we're going to see if it works. And I just kind of like slowly put it around the corner of the blind and then like turned it a little bit, and boom, automatic. These two birds came perfect, walking right in, come right up to the decoy, start strutting around and everything. Joey's first bird. I've explained where to shoot and everything, but we all know it can be tough. And uh, to be honest with you, it looked like he got a shot. He drew actually pretty well. I, I mean, I just had to, like, tell him, like, when they turn, try to, or when they get behind the decoy, then draw. And so he shot the one and, uh, like, eight yards. And the best I can guess is he hit low, lower than a, or, no, Low and right, high. right, well, low and 
back toward the... Yeah, because he missed all the legs and he didn't hit anything. Of It zipped right through him. And he ran off like... You could tell he got hit, but he ran off like, what the heck was that? Well, we gave a little bit of time, went back, looked at the footage. None of us could really clarify really what it was, what kind of hit it was. It didn't look like a like lethal, a hit. lethal hit. But So me and him went back and looked and looked and looked and anywhere in there, and it was so thick. They're like we couldn't find, we didn't find blood or anything, which is kind of rare in the first place. Um, but you couldn't really. I mean, what were we supposed to do? You know, actually, I even brought Christo too to see if he could pick up a smell or anything for it. Um, Upon further review, I don't think that bird died. Oh, I I know. I I'm I'm about positive it didn't because of the second experience. And I I want to go look at the footage. Though. They sure acted the same with the birds that they were out. But then again, I don't know. That was disgusting. What the frick? Wow. It just sounded like a cow crapped his pants in here. I feel so much better. Good Lord. God, we're okay. not going to. That's all the turkey I've been eating. If Thank anybody God, hears us. can't smell the podcast. Yeah, if anybody just all of a sudden hears a thud and somebody knocked over I and apologize talking. for the continued audio quality. Yeah. <laughs> I just came from that the. That was good. I just came from the bank and the teller smelled it. And from Oh, my, my <laughs> gosh. You are such a moron. <laughs> Anyways, I don't even get it. <laughs> I don't think I do either, but that's the fact, more, that, that's the fact that he's class. making some stupid, d- oh, some dad joke. Well, is what okay, I was now like. it's more. Yeah, that makes, makes more, more sense, sense now. Anyways, me and Joey hunted two, three more days of. Uh, what made you think of a bank with bulletproof glass? He just came from the bank. I just came from the bank. He just was at the bank. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't right. connect. And I tooted and, and I saw her cringe. Oh, God. Don't say the word tooted. That's worse than freaking. <laughs> ugh. That's worse than saying just, just shit your pants. Okay. I'm going to go on. Sorry. And talk about turkeys. Right. <laughs> okay. So that was the not that was first a, day. That, that was, was the second f- day. That I thought that was the first day that you guys shot. It, well, we didn't get to hunt that morning, remember? The morning oh, before. That's right. And so I knew where they were at that evening. And I kind of said that, like, this is just going to be a sit to clarify if they're there because I didn't want to push in on them. And they were, so we went back the next morning and got a shot. Gotcha. All right, so that's well, the second day. Two, three days of me shooting now, and we didn't, we didn't get really anything right, close. We, we had a lot even, of birds. Even with new hunters, we take turns. Yes, we do. Well, Joey's to the point now where you get your shot, <laughs> yeah. and, you're, and you're in the back seat now until the other person shoots. So I remember as a kid being paranoid of that. Of, <laughs> well, I was scared of, of, my, of missing my first shot and then having to mm-hmm. wait for Dad, you know? That's a, the Especially best. when we went to Nebraska because we all had so many tags. It's yeah. like you missed that first one, and it's going to be maybe waiting a little bit. <laughs> but it was always you guys going first. That was, yeah, the, that's best, fair. That was the best thing in antelope hunting went in Wyoming the one year. I missed a, I missed a buck, killed a doe, and then we got permission on this other place, and he would only let a kid hunt. So then I got to shoot again. <laughs> <laughs> it was wrong. It was just what I told the guy. You do realize that you're teaching my son a horrible lesson, and he didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well anyways we go uh, and I told Joey I know where s- the same birds are if they're there and then I know I know there's a lot more we just walked up sat on a ridge for a second I said just give it a second we'll, we'll probably hear something and we didn't so I threw a crow call out and one hammered just a little further than I was anticipating going but I said alright Joey I already know exactly where that's at and where they're going we're going now and started going, and we got across the one one fence of where the pasture is, and I said, we're going to stop right here just to be safe because I know some birds normally roost down here. We're going to give it a second. Right when I said that, like five gobbles, like then 100, 150 yards right next to us, said, all right, that answered our question. That bird will come up if we need him to, and we got a lot more right here. Set the blind, and I told him, the moment you get, I threw out one uh, hen call, to make sure that, like, they were actually, like, I wasn't just hallucinating that they were further away. They were actually right here, right when we got set. I said, all right, once you're set and you got all your stuff, um, we're going to wait. The moment I know that they're on the ground, we'll start calling. And we, I would think that out of this many, we should be able to get something to come in. Well, those ones are going off over to our right, and it's 630. Sunrise, 645 or 650. So it's like... We still got a lot of time. Right. And I look at him. I said, I swear I can hear a bird drumming. And he goes, you're kidding me. That's like the fourth one you've heard. I was like, no, nope. Yep, that's drumming because I just heard him spit. 
And I turn around, and thank God I don't have to open a window up anymore because that scares the crap out of me. Because when I turn around, yep. and I look through the, the blind, I right here, like big old Tom strutting 10 yards. And I said, Joey, get down now. He's like, he's ticked and he's coming. And before I could even do anything, I got the camera set there, and I couldn't even move it. I couldn't even get my lens unlocked to be able to zoom or anything. And you just see right out of the corner of the blind, here comes a strutter coming right in. He goes, postures up to the decoy, kind of looks at him. Right when he comes around the decoy, Joey shoots him front on. And he's like, oh, I could remember. I crushed him. All I could remember is you said the front frontal shot's your favorite shot. And he turned, and I put it right next to his beard and shot, which I haven't told him yet that he cut half his beard off. But <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to tell him that. But he flopped and flopped and then went down and crashed probably 50, 60 yards. And I kind of felt bad because I was like, man, you just killed your first turkey. Like, I'd, I'll put my money on that one. But I really think that we should sit tight because I can hear these other birds back here. And that just sounded like a bird was Flapping flying away or right. something. And so he said, no, no, dude, give me the camera. I was already expect. I want to double up with you. I said, all right, well, I don't know about double up, but we'll give it a go. 15 minutes later, I, the birds that I, they only were gobbling every once in a while. And I turned around, and I was like, man, they sound like they moved up. But that, I don't know why they'd be going that way. There's nothing there for them to go. I turn around, and like 300 yards out in the field, I see at least four or five turkeys. But I couldn't see what they were. And I said, I can at least see a redhead. And I see, I know some of them are hens. But I said, I don't know, Joey. I know there's some jakes gobbling in there. But for the sake of us doubling up, I don't care. And we're going to try to call them in. And once they got a little close, the moment I started calling to them, they turned the whole, and just like his bird last year, where they were, his tom was, uh, had seven hens, and then when he decided he wanted to come over to the decoys, he starts circling his hens, pushing them, you know? Yep. Same thing. I was like, why do they keep going back and forth? Then I realized there's other hens, and he, they're going, these two toms, now I can see their ropes on them. I was like, Joey, it ain't Jake's. We got two big toms, and then two other Jake's that were coming in with three or four hens. And he was hurting them, not even strutting. Like he was move, on a move, and he was put, those two birds were pushing them all over. They get right behind us. And I see the toms start to go down to the right. And you know sometimes when toms can see the decoy or uh, like if they're coming to it, sometimes they don't always go like directly to it. Right. They'll like kind of get to a different angle and then come at it. Well, you could tell that they got to right there, and they're like, like they, they wouldn't even strut because they were on such a line. And they start to turn right, and I have to get through a fence. And Joey's like, oh, man, they're going away. And I said, uh-uh, Joey, just wait. And they get through, because I knew there was another hole in the fence. And they get through the fence. And all you see, they right when they get through, running. And, like, who can get to the decoy first <laughs> and start beating the living crap out of the decoy? And I was just, I've told you guys so many times, I can never get them to beat the decoy up. I got it to excessive amounts because <laughs> I'm at full draw. I can't get them to stop. Right. And I'm like, Warren was making fun of you. Like, what the heck are you calling for? They're already there. It's like, tell me when I'm supposed to shoot because they will not stop. I needed to give them to try to get a distraction in here. Well, they wouldn't stop. So I figured first one that gives me a split second, I'm settling that pin and letting her fly. And I tell you what, it was a second. And like, yeah. he turns, thunk, and shoot him. And when you watch the video, I don't know how much I should be telling it, but the other one flaps his wings up to beat the decoy. And you see my lighted knot go through the bottom, like the just the feathers just of his corner. wing. Like he, yeah, nothing there, but like it goes right through <laughs> the one's wing into the one I was aiming at. And he runs over, and they end up dying within 10 yards of each other. Come back up. Joey's freaking out. <laughs> we got a double. We did. I can't believe this. I was like, do not get used to this because this is my first ever double in 10 years in Iowa. But... And granted, if I would have had my second archery tag, I'm done playing the role that I used to do it with, like Warren did. Keep my other tag in my pocket in case for a shotgun if I need it. Oh, no. I'm buying both archery tags because it'll never happen again now. But <laughs> that we had Joey shot his, I shot mine, and my the other bird that was there just kept beating the decoy up. Would not stop. And I could have shot him too. So... It was a heck of a hunt. We were done, and that was the last day for him. And we're like, man, we're notorious for waiting for the last day. But it was uh, a well, lot it was Joey's of birds. last day. That's what I'm saying. It was yeah. Joey's last day, and we're like, he. Yeah. And th what he hadn't told me is he couldn't hunt that afternoon. He's like, I didn't oh. want to tell you because I didn't know how you were going to take it. I was like, oh, Lord, dude. <laughs> Good thing we yeah, did get it really, done this morning. You really 
brought into the ninth inning. You know, we were done sunrise, 645, 650. We were done at 715. <laughs> and they were both nice toms. Oh, yeah. Really nice toms. Two-year-old mm-hmm. birds or something. but Yeah. I, big old beards. I wonder what the difference is this year that we're having with killing turkeys what do you from mean? last year. Well, we've killed five, and last year, the first week, we killed 11. And we're through the first week now. I'm telling you right now, I'm having a way better year because I hadn't even gotten a shot after a week and a half, two weeks last year. Yeah, but you guys, you were being really stubborn on locations. You weren't I, well, hunting I guess, any different stuff. I no, know. I disagree with it because I would agree that we were be- we wanted to stick to one place, but at the same time, I did scouting this year. And we, I knew where the birds were at before I went in as opposed to trying to find them when I got there. I feel like the birds are, are not where they normally are for me, for like the areas that I hunt. They're not like like typically I have certain field. I know if I drive by there a few times, I'll see them in that field. They're not there. I have another field. They're not there. But then randomly I'll see one maybe in the next field over, and he just walks through, and then I don't see him again for four, five, six days. Then when we get into the – Warren's going to talk about his here in a minute, and I don't, I've never seen that many toms together. I, I haven't I, either. Yeah, not, when he just showed me that Iowa. video, I haven't seen – that looked like Nebraska stuff. Yeah. And it's, I've never seen that ever right. before here. I think we had seven. We would we end up eight, eight. seven to at, eight different times. At toms. one time, there well, there was definitely confirmed eight. But in the field, have you guys also paid attention when you're like driving back from lunch or something? I'm not seeing birds like That's out in I'm the saying. fields or anything. Right. Most of the time, right. midday, I'm finding a tom here and there or whatever. I'm not finding that at all right now, yeah. whatsoever. Well, this has been the most difficult season as far as for me as far as getting a shot opportunity yeah. that I think I've ever had. Uh, what was it Friday morning that we finally got a shot? Yeah, I yep. flew out because um, you guys hunted the night that's before. Right. I was mad about it. And I was we having... haven't had a single shot in the afternoon, have we? I was I just hadn't... gonna say that too. That every single kill has been in the morning. Morning, yeah. even Nebraska, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. So I have... I hate afternoons though. But we've also this this year too, though. To add that, I mean, we've had some of the craziest weather, and yes. I mean that in both aspects. We've had freezing cold, rainy, snowy. And we had snowed yesterday. Yeah, and then but the day before that it was eighty three degrees, eighty one, mm-hmm. you know, and so it's and like the wind this year. and the wind has been howling about every day. Well, yeah. you'd expect you almost got to expect it with having that different of wind or weather every day. Well, for instance, the first morning that you guys didn't go because where you guys were hunting at it was raining even harder. Mm-hmm. Me and Eli end up doubling up on two toms in the rain. Um, it just been it's just been weather after weather event after weather event. So yeah, I, I think that that definitely I'll know that I'll know if that has had somewhat of an effect on the fact of moving the birds if in the next week or two I start seeing them where I normally would be seeing them by April first, you know. Yeah. See if it just kinda of pushed them along and pushed them back a little bit. But I've I've watched Tom's strut I mean strutting, we've been witnessing that. I've watched Tom breed a hen, so I know that they're actually mating. You know, so they're doing their thing, you know. Warren's about to go into his, I'm sure. But what? this is the first year that I've noticed, um, like, Tom's breeding the ground, you know, or even Jake's. I've seen him do it before. But this year, do you have any opinion or theory as to why? Almost, like, like almost every day I've seen one or two do it. And, like, Viagra. multiple times. <laughs> they they found <laughs> Viagra. <laughs> He That's, said that with a straight face, too. For anybody that wasn't, <laughs> that couldn't watch, he just looked at me straight the, face and the, said, Viagra. The turkeys have done found Viagra. <laughs> I don't think they, they even have peckers, though. No, Joey taught me. He yeah, read a biologist so be, report on it. So it would be that much more powerful for them. It would just last forever. We'll see We'll see how dedicated people are, because I told them that I know what our April Fool's joke is for next year. For next year. Yep. Holy cow. We it's going to it. be a magic pill for your pop-up line. It's going to help the body oh, pop up itself. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> All right. Oh, that is messed up. Especially with how many shafts are in those things. Warren Holder, <laughs> go to the, go to tell your story. Yeah. Goodness gracious. This is supposed to be yeah, a family yeah. podcast. Too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways. We're past the PG-13 level. You're the one that got it started. I didn't um, say Viagra first. Dad did. Yeah, that's true. Well, I hadn't even. You guys didn't answer my question. I have no theory on that. I don't either. I, no I, I've, I don't feel like I've seen it more this year than I've seen in any other year. I mean, you get a turkey worked up, and they'll do it. They'll just start breeding huh. the ground, especially Jake's, because they're frustrated they can't get in on the breeding, and you know, so then they just do their thing over there. But interesting, <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, we had that first morning 
the first morning I didn't go because it rained. And that's when Dad killed his double. And that afternoon, I thought that afternoon was fairly normal as far as like we were into turkeys and you were here in gobbles, I think, weren't you? Yeah, because I didn't hear a peep. But we had two, two. I think the Tom was was the Tom the first one that came by Nick, or was it the two Jakes? It was the Tom, that's right. So we had Tom come in, come skirt us. He was at like twenty, and then he just went kind of went around us, and we were in the timber near where they roost. And uh, so then he just went down to like fifty and was just sitting there gobbling. I figured it was just a chicken bird. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then we had two jakes come in, and then we had seven jakes come in, and we had two other birds that were gobbling, and they started, like, coming. Like, you know, where you could tell, okay, these turkeys are, they are covering ground. moving. Yep, they are moving towards us at a pretty quick pace. And uh, they finally got to where we could see them, probably 100 yards away, and I wasn't sure what they saw um, because they were right about where that chicken bird was ran into the chicken bird and turned around and left. I mean, like they came right up the hill to where they could see, saw like the chicken bird and then they left. And so I don't know if they saw, I think they could see the blind too. I don't think they could ever see our decoys. Um, and so I don't know if it was the blind that they didn't like, or if it was, if it was that other, they that found a turkey or whatever. And like, okay, it's just him. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know what happened, but so then we went back again the next day, heard lots of other birds gobbling, but, um, and then heard those same ones, but they just flew down and, they like weren't leaving the roost. We're, like, they we're, were gonna staying to, really close to the roost. There's we got to go at those birds a different way because I, I was having the same like. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Is then Easton was like, oh, "I'm gonna I'll go kill them," and I was like, "Okay," because they're acting weird. And uh, and then he went up there and had the same. We thing. did we did discover another five tom, Jakes and a couple other Toms from different parts, but they would do the same thing. Yeah, like they're just flying out of the tree and they're not. They may go a few hundred yards, but they like it's not like they're going anywhere. I have a theory on that one. Well, we'll cover that in yeah. a minute. Cause, so then Nick and I went to a whole new place the next day that's been really good to us, and we couldn't buy a bird. I mean, we couldn't find anything. We did finally hear one gobble, and then I walked down when we couldn't hear him anymore and got him to gobble one more time, but then we set up on them, and they wouldn't do anything. Right. And so then we finally found some birds, and uh, and we found those in the afternoon. Yeah, we found those in the afternoon. Goblin and, or seeing? Um, s- seeing, because I got... We were sitting in the blind so, waiting, yeah. and then I got impatient. And so I went and peeked around the corner, and that's when I could see them out there in that field and heard mm. them gobbling. And so then we figured, okay, well, now we kind of at least have an idea. And uh, then I'm trying to think if then you came with me that next morning. I think the next morning is when me and you went back there. Yeah, so then we, Dad and I went back the next morning. I needed some doo because woo was not cutting it this time. And so Dad comes with me, and we set up further on the – south end of the food plot well the the whole thing was is the birds were that you had seen the day before were on the neighbors we couldn't you couldn't other than co- try to call them over yep we couldn't go set up on them but and we figured for sure that we'd i mean it's only 200 yards that one of them would break and get and them come too. yeah that we'd be able to get one to come over and come through the food plot or something i'd be curious though from where you guys are sitting the stuff that you guys ended up sitting in i, I mean i feel like that was a lot of crap for them to it walk is. through I also think that they were a little farther than what we thought. You know, yeah, but they were up like on a that motivated hill. Motivated bird Not isn't going to stop for much. Yeah, yeah. It's not like he couldn't walk through. It's just timber. Yeah, but it's not like they could stop and strut at any point. They're not going to be able to see at any at all yeah, the points. Yeah, but think so. about all the stuff those other birds come through. I feel like a horny bird is not like, oh, you know, there's some brush there. I, no, I don't know. I, maybe I just dealt with difficult birds, but I don't. I think that's weird. So, so then we decided, okay, well, this isn't. We got to get as close as we can. So we decided we were going to bump right up to our fence, but we weren't sure what it was going to look like because there's a bunch of crap yeah. and stuff. Well, it ended it's up just really thick. Ended up being a pretty decent. A lot better set up than we expected. Uh, so then I had I had Duju and Yuju, and so the three of I us thought were you were in calling there. it Eju. E, no, that wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense. Yuju, Yuju, yeah, okay. Duju and Yuju, uh, and so we <laughs> we kind of we finally sense saw sense. them though because we figured they yeah, were roosting that evening, right there. So that's an evening we're hunting that was where, an evening. where you had seen them the evening prior. Yep. Me and you had hunted in the morning and couldn't get them to do anything. We went back that afternoon and said. Let's try to get close enough to them. So we set up now on the fence boys. where we could see. And then we were able to hold the decoys off, what, six, seven yards from the fence. So yep. there was enough room for a bird to come from the neighbor through the fence and still get to your decoy. And they could it, they could still see it. And it still wasn't see so it. far right. back in the thick stuff that they wouldn't be able to see it. Yep. Yep. So we saw, we saw and heard 
I think we felt like probably what, maybe three four. or four birds? Yeah, at least three or four. Five. And so we're like, okay, this is pretty good. Well, I mean, throughout the sit, but remember when they started roosting, we had like six or seven. We were like, there's a lot of birds up in here right now. I didn't think we thought it was it did, quite that I know many. the next morning when we went back, That's what it, was even it seemed more. like it had, there was even more. Yeah. When we went, so they had to have been there. Yeah, some of them yeah. just weren't gobbling. Yeah. So anyways, we had, the, and we saw a couple birds, but nothing came close enough to us until they were still 250 yards out in the field. Which, and, we, and weird enough, we saw some late. Well, both. Because you know, we didn't want to bust them off the roof, so we were just sitting there, and we saw two of them at 810. Yeah, they were t- that, that evening, they came back out in the field. The one chased the other one, and it was dark. I yeah. mean, all we were doing was sitting in the blind waiting for it to get dark enough that we could get out. So waiting for them to leave. Waiting. Yeah, like to, we wanted to get out safely. Not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was we were just trying to wait to leave, and those two toms came back out in the field, and that one chased the other one around, and they went back in and roosted. Super dark. So then the next morning, Dad and I are like, okay, we're just going to go back to the same spot. And now all we need is one to just – and we feel, you know, like we got a better chance in the mornings. We can get one to break off from the flock, and we'll be in good shape. And uh-huh. uh, when we went back in the morning, there was a pile of them. I've, we were, never, yeah. I've never seen video from us in Iowa like that. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. And, but they but did the same just, thing they did the evening before. The first bird came out in the field – and I can't even film. I'm trying to film him, and I can't see him. It was Warren, like six ten a.m. Yeah, Warren's like, it's a tom. I can see it. I'm like, how, how can you tell? And he's like, because I can see a beard on him through binoculars, but yeah. through the camera, I can't even. I can't find him in the viewfinder. Yeah, that, it was why, dark. That like Joey's bird had to have pitched down. Like by the time he got to us, it was it was like, still before sunrise. So he had to have pitched down early. What are they doing so early like, and so late? I feel like Miriams go to bed early compared to Easterns. Easterns seem to, like, really be well, willing to push it. It seems like Miriams. I don't know. You don't I, think so? No, because Alabama will tell you that they're, they're out way before us. Really? And the, No, as in, like, they get out of the blind or where yeah. they're sitting way before we do. I'm, like, I'm sitting there ready to keep hunting. And they're like, yep, let's go. And their birds seem to get go to the – like, they're at least at their roost, not freaking running to get <laughs> wherever yeah. they are because they're late. Well, these yeah. so we had like five fly down in the field, or five come out in the field, five toms, and we could still hear more in the timber gobbling. So we knew, and there was more um, up on the hill that we never saw. So there was like ten toms together, which we've never seen that many. Oh. Which is, I guess, it's a good thing to see, but it's also kind of uh, makes us wonder: is that why we're not able to find them on other spots? Is that they're super they're flocked groups. up still? Yeah, and so then Dad managed to call in pretty much the entire flock. And had all these hens coming at us, and we had like five toms coming at us, and so finally the hens got the hens of the one bird got to probably I don't know seventy something like that, and then he decided he's like, okay, I don't like you there anymore, and and he fully committed, and he came <laughs> right through the fence, starts beating up the decoy immediately, which was perfect for allowing me to get the full draw. I get the full draw, and then he's still beating it up, and I'm like, I'm like got the pin on his head and stuff, but he was just like bobbing and weaving. It was like Mike Tyson, you know, he's just all over the place. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't freaking hit this. And so then finally he goes back into a full strut. And I was like, perfect. That my plan the whole time, one, I thought that usually with my field points, when I'm shooting at just practicing, you know, because you can't practice with those whopper choppers a lot right. because they just, they break. Yeah. Even shooting the pillowcase. Um, anyways, <laughs> I shoot, I you shot have to shoot the, a pillow to make sure that these things are tuned. I could not believe that. Yeah. Well, the target, I was like, and like an inch or two high if I use my 20-yard pin at like 10 yards. You know, it's kind of normal. Yeah. So I've been aiming like just, I figured I'd put it right on the base of their neck. That so way if, if I hit, hit him right high. there, I'm good. Or if I'm hit high, I'm going to be right in yeah. the middle of his neck. But he gave me a perfect, perfect opportunity. He went back into a full strut, and I put it right there at the base of his neck, and I freaking whopper chopped him. Now, I was I was pretty impressed with because he was, that was not one of your simple ones where it's oh. like just walks in and kind of looking around or whatever. He was like. I've seen him blow Dude. a lot easier shots. Oh, yeah. You know? oh. Maybe you just needed it to be a little more difficult. No, I needed a target. Yeah, it was I, so much easier for me. One one shot Warren now because <laughs> all I needed was – I can't wait for the second bird now. <laughs> yeah. I'll just jinx the crap out of yourself. No, I'm gonna, I'll smoke the next one too because all no, I, I hope needed, you're right because I wonder if it's a confidence thing. No, it it's, gone. it's that I have to think too much when they're turning and everything. I have to think about their body and think about um, – where, where, like, deer, elk, antelope, it's second See nature for shoulder. me. I know where I need to put my arrow. On a deer or on a turkey, I have to think way too much. Where on his head, 
Yes. All I'm trying to do is wait till his head's in the same spot for a second. Did you use um, your your index finger release? Yes. Or your, okay. I didn't know if you'd try. I wouldn't try the hinge it. unless it was on uh, your hinge, on yeah. the body. And I wouldn't. I could try it on the head, but I, honestly, I, I think on the head you're way better off with your index release. So you can because I need it need to it. go off when I need it, like probably so now when they're moving around like that. I mean, you're on because you were probably at full draw. I'd guess for. 15, 20 seconds at least. Yeah. You're know, there for a little bit. As he much. moves around, you need to be able to, like, as soon as that pin is, okay, there's my shot, shoot now. You yeah. Know? Well, that's what I really wanted to be, like, in a full strut like that. That was the one thing I wanted. I was really, really, really wanted to make sure I didn't get busted drawing, you know, because it's one thing when they kind of, like, start walking away to shoot him in the back, like, the center of the back with the in the body, you know, but I knew I wouldn't be able to do that with, a, with the Whopper choppers. Chopper. And their heads start doing that bobbing when they're leaving Nervous, like that. And yeah. I didn't want to have to be trying to hit one in the head as he's doing that. I wanted him to be in a full strut where I could just put it right on his neck, either facing me or, or broadside. And, um, and it did, it did a number. It's kind of weird though. Cause it like, it like cuts him, but it like bounces off at the same time. Well, there's so much surface area there. I don't understand how it would actually go in. Yeah. The only Unless thing you like about perfectly, him. perfectly centered it to where it did. But even then, I don't think you're gonna get any penetration. I don't know. I wouldn't. I absolutely wouldn't shoot one in the body. I mean, but. just like you were banging, you were flicking the. I think it was the head of his turkey. You know, oh, before we went, hard how hard their head is and their vertebrae. I mean, it's solid. You know, there's, why were you flicking my turkey's head? I was just because we've had them bounce off their head. So I we was were just talking to like, someone about their head. Eli took mine. He skinned it, and he's gonna yeah, boil he likes, the head. These guys, there's all these people that are doing like they're they're doing that as a mount right. now. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool. I think it looks disgusting. Like, I don't, why would you want to keep that thing? <laughs> I don't know. The only thing that sucked, though, is that that arrow then went through part of his fan. Yeah, it totally and that's why it's screwed up. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought it was just a screwed up fan. I thought it was from him running. Oh, no, because when he walks by that tactic cam, you can see how freaking it was perfect. Perfect. Was perfect. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> There's a downfall. Yeah. But so overall, I would say the Whopper Chopper experience is pretty good. The only other thing I hate about them, you have to screw is, on on yes, every time. I hate that. But That's somebody sent me that there's a can, a little cover deal for your quiver. So yeah, you to can make put them bigger. on there so that you can no, you put them on the Whopper Chopper themselves. So you just don't put it all the way up in your quiver. Right, but you at least you use clip it and then not cut yourself. Yeah, that would help because that yeah, I, was I was watching you do that, that every time and have to screw them on, screw them off when we're leaving. Yeah. And, yeah, that looks like a lot of work. Screw that. I'll just keep shooting more. Literally, ahead. screw that. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that that is intriguing to me because I had my first scare with the sh- bird I shot of, uh, like, you know how we've talked and talked and talked about you get to a certain experience level and you're still super excited. You're still super pumped up, but you have a, a form of control to it where everything you're doing, you're still, like, either it's now second nature or it's to the point of like you can calm yourself down enough and walk yourself through it to do and it's smooth process and it all goes it goes a lot better well this bird when i shot him like in my head everything was going smooth but then when i looked back on it like after after i started thinking about it i told joey like i started to think about where i shot that bird and then i told joey i was like i thought i think i shot him like he was maybe quartered towards us a little bit but no, I mean, I hit exactly where I was aiming. I went back and looked at the footage, and that bird was facing right at me. And I put it right where I thought, but it was flat out. Either one, I got really lucky with blacking out because I was so freaked out. Or two, it genuinely was that kind of second nature where I was like, I know when he turns like this, I need to put it there. Which in my head, that's what I was thinking. But I, I just really, once I saw the footage, I was like, oh my gosh, that kind of scares me that I, I mean, I, I knew It's hard because they, they don't have to move very much either. And you're way, way off, off on turkey. I, I, I mean, yeah. I an knew. inch or two, and then on the other side, you're four or five inches off, which is out of the kill zone. Yeah. I just had a, a gentleman send me a picture day before yesterday from Nebraska and said, what do you think on this one? And it looks like, to me, he shot right through the breast. And the bird, and it was mainly, had the bird been perfectly broadside, it would have been dead. But the dirt bird was quartered a little bit, and where he went in, I think he went right through. Yeah. And just for those people listening out there, when you go through that breast meat, Nothing there. There's nothing there. You don't even get any blood. I mean, they're just, yeah. it doesn't do much to them. And we know for a fact they can take it from mm-hmm. the bird that you shot a couple years ago. At, you know, Warren shot that bird three different times and hit him twice and killed him. 
you know, and then killed him on the third time with a shotgun, and he had holes in him. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about that bird. I think that, but the problem, I think, too, is that they're at a close enough range that when you're in your peep and stuff, sometimes it's hard to even register that they're moving. Right? Yeah. You know, so then you're, like, stuck on that spot, and as long as they're still there, you know, that you are you may not realize they moved a little bit. The other thing I will say is that I now that I'm thinking about it, I I bet part of my thing had to have been somewhat second nature because that was the first animal I've shot in five five or six years that is not a vertical pin, like just a single pin. I was using the three pin and obviously my twenty yard pin, and so I was scared shooting my first animal with it, like how I would really react to it, and I Don't guess I I mean it it worked and. <laughs> Clearly, it worked, but <laughs> it felt good too. So, I mean, that's. Well, I think we should pass on a little bit of knowledge, though. <clears throat> I mean, I guess not to take anything away from you guys. Congrats on three turkeys, because that's a cool deal. I was I was fortunate enough to be the one running the camera on Warrens, and that was fun. I mean, now, so one, I want to ask this question because we tried to give it a name, and I don't know if Bobbling Boobs is a good name or whatever <laughs> it is, but. What is the name? What are you guys when they're walking that, in when they're well not or when they start to run and <laughs> they're and they're not in a full strut but like three quarter strut and their it's breasts boob- start bobbling back it's and booby forth. Booby bouncing. I think it's gigolo mode. That's fair. <laughs> That's a good I one. We got I, Joey even said it one time when we had one coming. He's like, "Look at the booby bouncing." I feel like <laughs> not all those birds can do it though. Oh, yeah. like no, they have to just be in the right. Uh, they like got to be three right quarters strut. strutting. Yeah, because, because if they're yeah. not strutting at all, then all they look like is they need arms. When they do yeah, that, they're, when like they're like little, this and they come running. A little velociraptor. It looks like, it looks like <laughs> someone needs to give them something to do this. Yeah, that is so funny when they do that. When they do that, though, they're coming. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. like my birds that. did that. They're on the way. I yeah. was kind of bummed because it's fun to watch them go boink, 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 boink. But you're... When he came in, now, unfortunately, when you first saw him coming, he's behind a tree for me. But I'm watching him through my naked eye over top of the camera, and I was like, he sees the decoy. This is game. I mean, his demeanor changed immediately. I mean, you could just see that he was like, okay, now I've had enough. And for all those people out there, we have video now to show you not just one, well, you can't see it on mine, but my two birds at the beginning of the, on opening day came through a fence. Yours came through a fence to the decoy that was only six, seven yards. All, I guess the, both our birds, three birds came through the fence, but right. both our birds did. Now, they, those are Open. four or five wire barbed Bar- wire fences, not sheep fences. Barbed wire, you're okay, I think. Sheep fences, and you and I, we have video of one that will not cross a yep. sheep fence. You remember that? He's And yep. he's dragging oh. his beard on the fence back and forth. And when he finally figured out the way to go around the fence and come through, he did. And we were like, oh, this is going to be it. But it was like 15 minutes. Yeah. He lost he, interest. He like, come, and then he walked up and he was like, mm, I don't even care. Yeah. And walked what, away. What was the, um, the I could have, sw- maybe, and maybe this is just a matter of the quality of the barbed wire fence too, because I could have sworn that. That bird that, remember we were just talking about the one where we sat in the cedar tree because we got caught too quick or they were out there. We sat against cedar tree and he came behind us but wouldn't come through the fence. Was what I could have sworn that was a barbed wire fence. It, and I, I think, think if you get like a five strand really yeah, good barbed wire fence and the, and the bottom one is say six, eight inches off of yeah, the ground they, and then the next one's just right there, they I think get, it, can, yeah. it does make it tough for them to get through. Because that yeah, bird finally a, did come through but if he it's took a really forever. good barbed wire fence, maybe. But I think part of that one was a sheep fence, and then part of it was a barbed wire. Maybe that's I think that's why we were grabbing the decoy. We were trying to get him, aid over him to, the, to a certain spot. We were trying to, to train him. The, go go over here, little fence. buddy. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. No, I ended up shooting on the other side of the fence, remember? Oh, I thought you got him to pop through. No, remember? We just ended up turning around, and, and you like pulled him over so that he wasn't Oh, a that's yard what it was. Yeah, him. I still had to go yeah. out there a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, funny. But yeah, keep that in mind. I mean, it, and or like just massive obstacles. Yeah, like big, a ditch. big wide creek or a bit like big stuff like that where they don't have they can't really walk through it. If they got a pitch to fly over it. Yeah, good. It's tough. Really tough. Granted, those freaking hens with us three. Yeah, they flew in. I think they flew from the food plot. Maybe because like where I walked up on that little hill and it was glassing. 
that angle is like the only thing that made sense for them to pitch over to where they were. That was pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, we're we're just sitting there for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about. Well, nobody's gonna know what we're talking about, but we're sitting there, same spot he kills his bird, Warren kills his bird, and these two I'm sitting there looking out in the field waiting for the we can hear something out there. I'm watching, and all of a sudden these two go, hens flying in, hens flying in. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And I look over, and they're like over our blind over here to the left, just flying down in our field in the middle of the day. I'm like, what, what the heck? That's my calling. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're coming to. Yeah. That's fair. So it was all good. It's well, been a so good season. I would think, though, that one other thing I would say with that, if you, I'd be really interested to see if you put your decoy right next to the fence. If he would, if they would not come through at all, nope. or, or if they would just go further down the fence, and come, come through, through and, and then come, come up. It. I would no. think, but that we would tell you, I think it's a hit or miss. Give them some, try to give avoid them that if you can to putting it your decoy right next yeah, to the fence give, so that they have a little room to. Yeah, because in so to explain this setup, we could have we could have put the decoy right on the fence so we knew they could see it out in the field, and we intentionally held it back about six yards. And I trying I even, to you know trying to give them enough room to get through the fence. And I even ate my words on that one because I told Warren I said, "Man, I still think that we're so close that I feel like a bird's going to come in and he's going to strut right there at the fence. Not because he can't get through the fence, but because he's he's going to have to come out of strut a little bit if he's pumped up enough to get through." And you guys both were like, "No, I think we got enough room, and it'll." Well, do I it. go he to did. last year in Nebraska when we were reaping that evening. When when we got that bird, I got that one bird to come, and there were we almost oh, yeah, killed, yeah. and and we couldn't get off the fence. We were only four or five yards off the fence, and he poked through that fence in no time and came around. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So it's it's different. Every every the the biggest thing I was teaching Joey because he's trying to learn is what's made me a better hunter by because everything I'm doing I'm explaining, but it's it really is comes down to in my opinion just about every flock or bird individually reacts a little different to everything so you got to kind of play them as as the game plays you know and change it up that's why you can carry multiple calls and multiple diaphragm calls like the biggest tip i learned from you and joey was asking me about it because he noticed i was doing it and i said my dad never taught me it but i watched him do it all the time was you would uh like when we get to a place and you start calling you'll throw your diaphragm call in and you'll call a little bit well if we know there's birds there or whatever, you may switch your call out if they're not answering, and you kind of would cycle through some of your calls until they respond to one of them. Because a lot of times, you give them something else. They'll like the particular call. And they might even be, it might even be different from day to day. And so I was telling Joey, because he's like, why do you keep switching calls? And I said, because I know that birds are gobbling right there, and whatever I'm doing, they aren't liking very much right now, until I found the one that they really liked, and once you get them interested. Which was what? uh, the birds that we called in surprisingly ended up being my diaphragm call. <laughs> that is surprising. I was very impressed. <laughs> if you've ever heard him but use a diaphragm, really I, like, oh, I will. That hen's easy. This this is a uh, maybe this is just a stretch, but I think now I'm going to go look at the footage because I want to see if there's any sort of distinction on the two birds that I kill or the one I shot and the other one that was there that came in compared to the two that Joey had gotten his opportunity at because. I was calling with my diaphragm primarily for the morning because they kept hammering back at it. Well, I'm not, like, this is the first year I've really used a diaphragm call, which is kind of embarrassing to say, but because I've been so bad at it, I'm like, but I've made myself. This is the first time you've ever put any effort. Yeah, but I've made myself learn it this year, and I'm getting better, but I still haven't figured out how to purr. in my Like, when they get, like, close to me, and, and they're, like, maybe kind of hesitant, I love to do, like, a really, really, really quiet, just like a, very slight purr because they, they hear so well and I have to do it on my slate call because I can't <laughs> I can kind of do it with my diaphragm call but it's loud and it sounds like a duck getting shot or something I don't know <laughs> and <laughs> these birds when they they stopped for a second and I took my slate call which keep in mind this is why I thought it may be a something to, for other people to think of the day that Joey got a shot and didn't hit it well I was only using my slate call because I wasn't comfortable enough with my diaphragm call yet. And so I was, it was the same slate call. Well, those birds were coming in. They came 300 yards. And then when they got close enough and they started to kind of hesitate, I started to do that little purr, and they stopped <coughs> dead in their tracks. And I don't know. And then I just did like a little little yelp, light yelp. Like they were like, 
Mm. We heard and that I'm, before. And that's exactly, and Joey's like, you put that down right, why'd you put that down? And I said, I, if it's the same birds, I don't know if it is, but the way they acted, they were so committed. And then the moment I did that, they seemed to kind of hesitate. So I stopped using it because if it is those same birds, you remember the other day, that's the only call I used. And so keep those things in mind. Or like when people in your area are using the same calls. Right. If you hear someone use them. Take whatever call there is that nobody's touched. Now, <laughs> but I would tell someone I go the opposite in, in the evening. If I get a bird that answers me in the evening to my diaphragm call or whatever call that I'm using and they're like responding and they roost and everything and I've roosted them with that I'm coming back with that call I believe that they'll remember I heard that hen last night over there I expect to hear that same hen yeah but that's that's a positive reaction yes. yeah I, I you mean you never had any education in there right. they never caught anything my situation was they got a freaking arrow launched at them and they didn't know what the heck it was and they saw a big blob and decoys and that's what they're coming into again and so I, think, I had a negative reaction. I think that. you were a little paranoid, though, on, like, thinking they were going to go somewhere because you, like, kept calling to them when they were already there at the decoys. No, at the decoys, I was I was doing that to try to get them to stop for a second. I didn't care about what they were doing. He was trying to get a shot. Yeah. He thought yeah. if he I called don't, to them. I don't think you're going to get them to do anything like that. Well, I'm telling you right now, please get please inform me on when they are beating the living crap out of the decoy and you're at full draw just wait. That's, yeah, yeah but I don't think you can do it. The anything. moment I wait, I'm sitting there thinking they're going to keep going and keep going because they already almost knocked the whole thing off the stake. That I'm not, they're going to, they, if they knock this thing over, I do not want to take the chance of them knocking it over and being like, what the heck? And gone. typically they, they don't won't do that. They, they will look at it like, well, I kicked your butt. And then they kind of stand there and like, proud of it. Almost like Rocky, you know, or like Apollo Creed standing over Rocky, like, Take that, dude. <laughs> or it'll scare them for a minute, and they'll run like five yards, and, and then they'll just like go back to a well, stride, or, or they'll stop for a minute and that wonder. What well, that on. me calling when they're at the decoys, I was like, that was the opposite. I wasn't paranoid of them going anywhere. I was like, the freaking things are will not stop. That's part of. And that's so true. I was, that, but that again, that was. I mean, I've watched you However, guys have had it happen. Hens, though, I've seen it. You can hold a hen forever. At your decoys yeah. by just real soft purr into it. It was so annoying. Because you can watch them walk away, and you can just purr to them I real told, soft, and they'll come right, right back. back. I told Joey that because we had six all at our decoys, and the birds are back there. I'm like, I need well, a call. Cause, but every time I they would start to walk away, I'm like, okay, just get a little further. And I'd call right back. I'm like, remember <laughs> You remember though. in Nebraska that time when, we, when you held probably – 25 hens We're right before it started snowing yeah yeah i mean we had legit at least 15 probably 15 hens for but, sure because we had a white one in there yeah remember that like yeah that's the only not and, a not a um domestic turkey but like a white hen and and then, albino uh, yeah is that well a not thing? she's not yeah she's, she's like not really al- yeah it's like so smoke i'm saying phase. like is an albino a, is an albino even a thing they for do birds? have one yeah but then that the is considered started. like some of those white ones are considered oh then the weather started and the toms shut down. Yeah. And so here we had all the hen- hens at Just 20 yards or less. Hens, not all of them. And they sat there for prey. They had to have been 10, You're 15 telling minutes. Me and the toms never came over. 25 hens and not one beard? No. Well, not that we saw. Oh but my. the other thing, if you remember, though, we were using the Be Mobile then and moving that tail. was. So I think movement does it too. I've had Jake's that I've, I mean, Eli and I probably had the longest I've ever seen. That was probably 20 to 25 minutes. He laid down. He laid down next to our decoy. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I he, last year. Yeah. yeah and I was, was like, "What the heck are you doing, dude?" Wait, a, tur- a the turkey, turkey the, laid the down. Jake came in and he first pecked on it and like did all what you normally would do, and then usually we shoot him. But he was a Jake, and I was waiting on a Tom, and so then he got done doing that, and he started to walk off, and I made a few soft calls, and I moved the decoy, and he was like, "Oh, wait a minute, let me come over." And then he <laughs> then he just laid down it's next. Like, to hey, it. friend, what's up? You yeah. want to be friends now? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was there for that's a probably Bud Light turkey minutes. right there. Long enough that Eli <laughs> managed to turn the camera off and not film me shooting the tom that came in. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> not on purpose. I don't know if I can't say. I know it's a thing, but I don't know if I've ever seen a male bedded down oh. like a tom or a Jake. Well, last year Nick and I had five hens lay down, like laid down and like they were dusting at first, and then yeah. they, if you had been walking, like came walking up through the field, you'd have thought. 
What the, what the heck? heck? Something killed all these turkeys because they were all <laughs> laying down over there, like just laying there on their side. On their, they weren't doing nothing. Like it looked like they were on their. Couldn't really tell, but there was five blobs just laying in the dust, not dusting anymore. Not nothing. just sitting down like a goose. They didn't have not one had their head up. You wouldn't even have known they were turkeys if we hadn't what been the, watching them. Where is that video? Should have it. Yeah. Yeah, we need to see that. Then they just. Because I think I make the comment. I'm like, we got five dead turkeys now laying over here. And we are and but, we haven't shot a single one. Well, <laughs> but half hour, 45 minutes later, Tom, they, they get up and the Tom comes back, picks them, them up, and that's the ones that walked in. And Because and, and, they were around. We had turkeys around us for four, four and a half hours before we finally got shot. And and it was kind of like a deal you're like you're talking about that when we didn't know they were there and they pitched out of the tree at 60 yards in the morning. Yeah. And it was dark. And I'm like, oh, this sucks because they're going to come in and I'm not going to be able to shoot because it's too dark. Don't worry. We're going to make you wait until 1030. This, at 630, they were in the field. Yeah. It was nuts. So We did get to watch those birds when they were first pitched. The hens, for whatever reason, were all sorts of upset. And broke up on the wrong side of the tree, evidently, because they came down and like 15 yards away from us, three or four of them just beating the crap out of each other, like flapping, doing their thing. That's good stuff. That like helps. jumping in the air, whacking each other and stuff. And they still didn't get the toms to come over. They didn't care. They're like, whatever. Yeah, but man, I mean, I've had hens come in and do the same to a hen decoy. Gosh, just dude, they're Peck mean. at it and peck at it and peck at it and peck at it. Just keep going and going. So Dan reminds me of a turkey. Whenever yeah. he gets another dog around, right. he starts pecking at him. <laughs> All right, well, I think we are hoping we're going to let you guys know the next thing that is the second week of the season has now started. and um, Well, almost ended. You're talking about Well, but I'm week, saying the second, second week yeah, yeah, is what I'm saying. And so these guys still have tags. Of course, I don't. I'm tagged out. But Yeah, but you're not tagged out, technically. Nope, I'm getting ready to head back to Nebraska. we got to get off of here because old Pops is going back to Nebraska, see if he can't get his second tag. But we'll, we'll try to keep everyone informed on what we're seeing as far as what these turkeys are doing because this does definitely get harder. It, we'll, we'll see. I mean, at least we would have told you that this last week should have been way easier than what you experienced, you know. Um, def- definitely stay tuned on what we're doing because I do know that now that we have some tags filled, one, dad's going to Nebraska, and he's going to be hunting a little different style, and we'll teach him how to do some Instagram stories because he's going to be alone and, and show you guys his little setup and stuff because it should be pretty cool. And then I do know that with me and Warren, we don't. Have you bought your second tag yet? Mm-mm. So we're it's up in the air with Warren as far as what he's going to do <laughs> next. And me, I'm I'm definitely going to be hunting a little differently here. But then we also have Wyoming coming up that we're definitely going to hunt a little differently. Mm-hmm. So definitely keep up with us. And well, I'm going to mine. I just flat tell people I'm going to try to shoot one without a blind. Uh, with my with bow. bow and self film, so I'm gonna have a Tacticam like all around me, you know that to make sure. Yeah, he just his, helped me hook it up so that I could have it all. His on plan my... is to have enough Tacticams all the way around him that he can make like a 360 degree view right. of all the. Turkeys. We can make slow motion turkey yeah. because we can go from one video to the next. <laughs> all, right, all right, guys, great talking with you again. Uh, again, reviews. And letting your friends know that the podcast continues to grow. And we can't thank you guys enough. Like the gentleman that sent the review in the C Raider. Is that what it was? Yeah. Well, yeah. He asked me on Instagram. But, but um, and again, we've had people stop us at gas stations, at restaurants, and things like that. And we appreciate the comments about the television show. But it's really cool to see the people that are, that I, I feel like people are almost more interactive with the podcast. And maybe that's because it's more live and we can do it all year long. So, yeah. And Thank keep you. sending the topics. Yeah. We need them. Yep. For sure. So. We'll take whatever we can get. Other than that, good luck turkey hunting, man. Hope you guys are having the we, – we've had a whole lot of experiences where we didn't kill one, and it's still – it's worth going. So this is the Raised Hunting Crew. We're out of here.